Hi, yes, yeah, you heard that right. You saw the title. We're gonna win Sky Wars with Hinduism. <sighs> so in my history class, there's a lot of different... Oh, Flace and Flickless. Okay, I was scared for a sec. Uh, so, uh, there's in my social studies class, my history class, we're learning about ancient India in the Axial Age. And I thought, wow, what a better way to commemorate this awfully boring moment than to make a video about winning Sky Wars with the power of Hinduism. Now, I'm about to have my final on Hinduism that I don't even study for anything in my life, so I'm not gonna, I'm gonna fail it pretty much guaranteed. Uh, we're gonna try to win Sky Wars by Hinduism. Now, there's many different types of Hinduism. There's Bhakti Hinduism, Brahmic Hinduism, there's Jainism, which is part of the synthesis, and Buddhism. Uh, those are the four main ones that we learned in class. And today we're going to win with a few of them. The first one we're going to win with is uh, Brahmin Hinduism. So in Brahmin, Bra oh, sorry, Brahmic Hinduism. So in Brahmic Hinduism, the goal is to pretty much starve yourself to death to the point where material goods no longer affect you. So I think we're just going to kind of have to meditate on this little pedestal here until somebody comes for us. And then, well, Brahmic Hinduism has no rules against violence, unlike some of the other Hinduisms. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Jainism. But, so we're going to just hope everything goes our way and pray to the gods and, and starve ourselves to death. So we, can, we have to deny ourselves all the sensual pleasures. And by that, I mean literally every sensual pleasure you can probably think of. So yeah, I guess let's just wait. And while we wait, consider leaving a like and subscribing, because nobody's going to watch this video, so it's important that you like it, because you'll be watching the video. Anyway, let's talk a bit about Hinduism, because why not? If this doesn't work, I'm just going to go to regular commentary over Skywars footage, because, yeah. Uh, the other Hinduism types that we're going to be looking at is Jainism, which actually has a rule against violence, which I'm pretty sure isn't going to work then. Uh, Bhakti Hinduism, which is devotion to a god, which will be kind of interesting, considering the possibilities. We can, we can literally pray to the angel of death. This guy's a four. Okay. You do you, buddy. You do you. And then there's Buddhism, which has some really interesting things. It's like the best one. We can win Skywars with Buddhism. If that if it makes you guys feel better, we can win Skywars with Buddhism. Because you pretty much have to just fulfill whatever obligations you were given to you. Which is kind of a part of Brahmic. So let me teach you something. So there's a lot of words in uh, Sanskrit, which sounds like Sanskrit, which sounds like Megalovania, which is the holy language of India back in the 700 BCE time. So back then, they would have everything in Sanskrit, and they we should pray on top of that pyramid. That'd be sick. Okay, so what we're going to do is pray on top of that pyramid. So back in uh, ancient India, they had this language called Sanskrit. And there are many different aspects of Sanskrit, but one of these aspects was that only a certain group of people could read it. And those people, oh god, I have to fight. I don't want to fight, dude. I really just, no, no, I want to just meditate. Okay, let me meditate, please. Oh, bro, like... Come on, like, is it that hard to just let a man meditate? I just want to fulfill my dharma to get good karma to reach samsara. Yes, those are all words I used on a sentence. Wait, I would? <laughs> so that went surprisingly well. I guess let's try to win with Brahmic Hinduism again, or Buddhism, or whatever you guys want. Let's give you a brief overview. It took my teacher about four weeks to teach this lesson, so I'm going to try to teach it in one video and see how much we get done. So, Buddhism is kind of complicated, but I'll teach you Brahmic, because that's the most simple one. Back in ancient India, there was this language called Sanskrit, which is the holy language only the Brahmins could read it. What were the Brahmins? Well, the Brahmins were the top class. There are four classes. They're called Varnas. Uh, the, the top class is the Brahmins, and they are the only ones. They're the top class, not because they're cool merchants or their name sounds the lamest, but they are also the only ones who can read Sanskrit and thus spread religion like freaking pillagers. So, oh, I'm not going to fight you right now. Um, yeah, we're good. So, the next class is the Kshatriyas, which have the coolest name, which making them the Warriors. I guess I'm kind of a Kshatriya right now. And they're the third class. After that is the other class. They're the Farmers. They're kind of lame, but, you know, they're not that bad, honestly. No Gora. And after that is the Slaves. And there's another thing underneath Slaves, but they're so bad, nobody really talks about them. So, I guess we're going to just have to leave it at that. Why, and how do you reach... What is the goal of Hinduism, you might be asking? Well, the goal of Hinduism is to end samsara. I told you, a lot of these words sound really similar. Samsara is pretty much the Hindu belief of reincarnation. So by ending samsara, you no longer reincarnate. Thus, your spirit gets freed, and it is sent to the afterlife where you can live peacefully or die peacefully together with all your other friends. And the only people who could reach samsara were Brahmins. But what if you weren't born a Brahmin? Well, there's no hope for you. Just kidding. Hinduism is actually a really fair, uh, really fair and complex religion. 
or at least Brahmic is, that allows you to reach samsara even if you're, there's so many people, even if you're just not a uh, Brahmin. And how do you do that? Well, it's called you level up the Varnas. Remember, the Varnas are social class. Well, how do you level up? So you can't reincarnate unless you're a, a, a Brahmin, which means that by that logic, you should also be able to level up into a Brahmin when you do reincarnate at an earlier stage. That is actually a correct terminology. You can level up into a Brahmin if you're a warrior. How do you level up into a warrior? Well, if you're good as a farmer, then you level up into a warrior. And if you're good as a warrior, you level up into a Brahmin, etc. If you're good as a slave, you level up into a farmer. So how do you actually level up? Well, that comes from getting good karma, just like the GG that I just said. So let's back up a little. What is good karma? Well, karma is achieved from doing your dharma. So when you're born, you're born into one of the four varnas, these roles that I already taught you. And then thus, henceforth, whatever word you want to use, you're assigned a dharma. Your dharma is your role or job in life. If you do your dharma, like if you're a good student, then you get good karma. And karma is how you go into the afterlife. If your karma is high enough, then you evolve a role. And then if your karma is high enough as a brahmin, you evolve into a, a reincarnator. Oh god, no, he survived. He did not. Oh my god, I cannot believe he lived. Bruh, I just. Bruh moment. Bruh moment. Brahmin moment, yes. Anyway, you're gonna die. So, what do you do after you have good karma? Well, you just have to wait till you're a. Uh, a Brahmin and then you starve yourself to death in a forest becoming one with all of the universe and that's how you achieve your ending of samsara. So if you're a Brahmin and you get good enough karma and you starve yourself in a forest to get rid of your obsession with material possession then after all that you can finally end samsara and become a reincarnationer which is my word for people that achieve samsara and reincarnation. Damn I'm good at commentating. <laughs> So, I guess that's kind of the gist of the whole Brahmic Hinduism system. See, I explained it in one video's worth. Let's explain a bit more while you're still here. So, what is Buddhism? Well, uh, I'll, I'll explain the other one. So, people didn't like it because, obviously, people didn't like Brahmic Hinduism. Oh, you can only do Brahmic Hinduism if you're a boy, by the way. So, if you're a girl, you have to be wait. You have to wait to be reincarnated as a boy Brahmin. So, even if you're a girl Brahmin, you still can't level up and achieve samsara. Kind of a sexist system. But... I guess our, we're still a sexist system now, so I guess not much has changed. So, yeah, what have we learned from all this? It, we've learned the key takeaway, if you haven't figured it out already, is that only Brahmins can achieve samsara and end the cycle. And the Hindus, being the great people that they were, said, wow, this is not fair. We should think, we think, we think everyone should be able to achieve samsara, regardless if they're a priest or not. So what did they do? Well, they made a new religion called Bhakti Hinduism. And this one's actually better because now everyone can reach it. You, your mom, your grandfather, and your baby-born sister. Well, you can all achieve samsara in a few easy steps. The first one is to devote yourself to a god. The most popular god nowadays is the god of death because, lo and behold, edgy people. Uh, after that, it's really quite simple. All the other gods are like the creationer and even Kali from Murder Mystery is a god. All you gotta do is devote yourself to a god and then you level up and get samsara. Easy peasy when you die. So Brahmin Hinduism, you have to start yourself as a Brahmin man, and Bhakti Hinduism, you devote yourself to a god. What's next? Jainism. There was this prince called Jain Kane or Mahavira. I think his name was Mahavira. I'm sorry if I butchered that name. You can correct me in the comments if you really care. So Mahavira, he decided, hey, let's make another religion because I want to get even more people to follow my religion. Except this religion is dying out. You know why? Because people in Jainism aren't allowed to have children, which is kind of stupid when looking at our religion. So the first step of Jainism is to do no harm to other people. It actually comes from this really interesting story that I actually sort of enjoy for once out of all these religions, and that is the story of the elephant and the blind men. So there's these blind perverted men all stroking an elephant, and they're all feeling different parts of it, like its ear and its tail. And each blind man thinks he knows what the animal is. The person feeling the tail is like, oh heck, it's a snake. And the person feeling the ear is like, wow, it's a really big butterfly. And they all have different perspectives, and that's the moral of the story. It's called the Doctrine of Maybe. And you never know what the other person is thinking, which is why you have to respect other people's opinions. And that's how that works. That's pretty simple, actually. It's a really cool story, not gonna lie. So after you realize that, the thing of Jainism comes quite simple. It's called Ahism, or Ahism, or a something -hism. And the, print, the point of it is no violence. You can't hurt other people, which is why I can't use it to win Skywars, because I actually have to kill people in this game, which is against the Jainism law which is why we can't do it. So Jainism is really interesting because you're not allowed to have children or any material possessions. You have to practice letting yourself go from all material values, which means you can't really have any pleasures in life if you're doing Jainism, which is why the religion is dying and nobody likes it, and why the god of death is the most popular god, because everyone wants to die because their Jainism isn't fulfilling enough. 
Anyway, moving swiftly onwards, the last religion is Buddhism. Buddhism is interesting because it comes from the Buddha, and the Buddha was this guy who sat under a tree until he felt like he was smart enough to get away from that tree, and bam. He was also a prince that felt tired of being posh and decided, hey, let's help the, the needy, or the unfulfilled, filthy people. And he went down, and he saw, wow, there's poverty in the world. Big shocker there. And he decided, I'll make a religion that everyone can enjoy. And I'm not going to starve myself, and I'm not going to be super weird like a Brahmin either. I'm going to make a middle ground, and it's called the Middle Way. What a creative guy, the Buddha, my hero. So Mr. Buddha, whose name was like Chandra Gupta, actually decided to make a new religion, because there's already enough of the... Already enough of those in India. So, yeah, what was the... Where's the last guy? Verge, okay. He actually looks good. Ow! So, Mr. Buddha decided, hey, let's make another religion called Buddhism, because I'm so humble. And he decided to do this religion in the sense that you got to... No, 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 no. Nope. That's not good. He decided, I'll make my religion really easy. All you have to do is do the middle. You have to respect other people, be nice to animals, and that's it. And then you pass the Buddhism. Well, I guess you can't get mad either, because in Buddhism, you're not allowed to get mad. That's just how the religion works. And I guess we're actually done. Because apparently being mad at someone is even worse than hating on them in real life and telling them to their face. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this lesson on Hinduism. You can now brag to all your friends that you know all the Indian religions, Bhakti, Brahmin, the other two. And yeah, thanks so much for watching this video. Sorry I talked fast. Just wanted to explain the concept in 10 minutes. Okay, bye. Thank you. I love you. See you next time. Peace.